Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for coming, and uh, it's really a great pleasure. Sorry, it's really a great pleasure to be here, that to present our work in front of you guys, and uh, uh, hopefully you could enjoy it. And uh, my name is Joran Wang. I'm from McGill University. Uh, my supervisor is Professor Josh Demopoulos, and uh, today the topic of my talk will be design of nano CVTS and titanium oxide fatal structure for uh, photoelectron generation. And I will be giving my talk according to the following four parts. First, I would like to give a brief introduction about CVTS and why uh, CVTS is a material that has attracted attention in the photovoltaic field. And uh, the main reason first is uh, like CIGS, uh, copper, indium, gallium, disulfide, uh, which is the materials has been widely investigated in the field of thin film photovoltaics. With exciting progress has been made, and the efficiency has been achieved beyond twenty uh, percent. And uh, CCTS, like the uh, little brother of CIGS, and it has uh, similar opt op opt op uh, optical properties and makes it suitable for the research in photo attack. And uh, unlike CIGS, more importantly, uh, which has a uh, indium and gallium, CCTS has only the earth abundant non-toxic elements, which makes it more attractive in terms of uh, uh, environmental and cost issues when making solar cells. And uh, for using solar cell, uh, for using CCTS for solar cells, it's adopt a similar configuration of the CIGS, which is shown on the left. Instead of using CIGF, and CVTS is act as a PTAP uh, materials, and uh, together with zinc oxide and calcium sulfide, form the pin junction and makes the solar cell work. However, for CVTS in solar cell application, it's facing a lot of uh, problems, and for CVTS in these materials. During the fabrication, it tends to form the secondary phases and the defects, and also the uh, CCTS tends to grow in small green size, and which makes it it's quite difficult to get the uh, uh, high quality uh, CCTS crystal. And those imperfect crystal, when we make into solar cells, it tends to act uh, as a recombination. There will form a lot, lot of uh, recombination centers and which will reduce the uh, device performance when applied into solar cells. And uh, uh, a general solution is to improve the quality of the crystal. By doing that, uh, the research community of CCTIs in field photovoltaics has done a lot of uh, great jobs by identifying and eliminating the impurities, reduce defects, as well as increase uh, green size when during the fabrication procedure. And uh, a lot, uh, the efficiency keeps improving uh, right now. And uh, but for CCTS solar cells, the CCTS need to uh, when CCTS need to use in thin film solar cells, these materials used to uh, need to be function as both uh, light absorber and uh, charge carriers. So we are thinking if we could find a different uh, device configuration instead of thin film, would it be possible to enable those imperfect crystals to function well? And that's uh, become a question about what kind of device configuration should we use? And uh, for this question, to answer this question, I would like to introduce the uh, extremely thin absorber uh, solar cell configuration. With this uh, uh, extremely thin absorber solar cell configuration, or EPA cells, the light sensitive materials is only act as light absorber and using other white band gap materials act as the corresponding uh, conductor, the whole conductor and electron conductor to transport the charges. And with this, it, tends, uh, with, uh, uh, it could achieve high tolerance to the further defects and impurities, and which could maybe the one solutions for the, for the solar cell, uh, for the CCTS application, maybe it could be uh, suitable. And uh, uh, a lot of research has doing this uh, by depositing a thin layer of materials on uh, titanium oxide metaporous films. For example, the disensitized solar cells, quantum dot sensitized solar cells, and also porous kite solar cells. 
so with this concept, we uh, perform the design of uh, using uh, using the CCTF to decorate the uh, master porous film. But unfortunately, we haven't got any good results. And we, it should have many possible uh, uh, possible reasons for this. But one of them, I, I think, it could be due to the uncertain and uh, uh, in long electron pathways due to there's a lot of green boundaries need to cross and uh, which will increase the recombination and efficiency rules and uh, in order to avoid that to improve that we draw a lot of our attention to another uh, morphology that's a one dimensional nanoware or nano uh, structure with this is tend to have reduced electron pathway is do not need to cross a lot of green boundaries and uh, it could have the possibility to uh, reduce your combination to enhance the collection efficiency and uh, maybe it could make the CCTS work. And uh, with this concept in mind, we keep, and uh, I would like to talk my work to design CCTS on titanium oxide nanorode and form this keto structure. And by doing this, uh, we use the three-step method to fabricate this uh, uh, heat structure electrode and the first is to uh, hydrothermally grow titanium oxide nanorod on the FTO glass and then we use a solution based stellar method to deposit the uh, precursor containing CZ, uh, copper zinc titanium sulfide on titanium oxide and uh, after finally we perform the for the annealing to induce the formation of CZTS crystal so when we obtain the uh, the, the, the sample and uh, we took a photograph image showing on the right corner here and we can see there's a huge difference before and after the CVTS deposition the color has changed significantly uh, which could induce uh, which could indicate uh, some changes has happened uh, but unfortunately we, for this SEI image uh, made a comparison before and after the dec uh, CVTS deposition we haven't seen any uh, significant changes, uh, changes, which means maybe could uh, due to the uh, poor resolution at this experimental condition. So we move on and uh, uh, perform Raman spectroscopy. And on the right image, we can show clearly the evidence of the coexistence of CCTS and titanium oxide, with showing up the uh, both characteristics of these two materials, which means that we have. Uh, successfully get the CVTS together with titanium oxide, but for until now we haven't seen what it really looks like. So uh, thanks for the thank the uh, transmission electron microscope, and we finally see these final features that the uh, the one dimensional nanostructure decorated by the nanoparticles and the uh, nanorod has been varied in different sizes. So it's because the uh, one dimension nanorod has been widely reported as titanium oxide. So it's very likely that these uh, small dots decorated on the surface are the CCTS. So to prove that, we use the EDS elemental mapping and at uh, SDM mode. And uh, uh, we found that the copper, zinc, tin, and sulfide are more concentrated on the, on the edge of this uh, uh, Hidro structure more particularly concentrated in the uh, nanoparticle region, and the titanium oxide are only in the center, the nanorod region, which means the uh, nanoparticle at CZTS and the uh, titanium oxide are the nanorod. So, in order to have a better view, uh, we perform the high resolution GI image, and from the image here and here, uh, we can see the good contact between the nanoparticle and the nanorod, which could indicate the good electronic properties and the efficient electron transport from CZTS to titanium oxide. And uh, the nanoparticles, it varies in size from uh, 5 nanometers to 20 nanometers. It's really small particles. And uh, after we get these materials, we use this as photo anode and uh, to fabricate this uh, CCTS sensitized electrochemical cell by using platinum as counter electrode and uh, the iodide electrolyte. And we finally get the uh, 
the IPC testing result on the uh, right, and uh, it shows clear response in the visible range when comparing to the pure titanium oxide, which indicates the feasibility of this uh, uh, structure when to uh, generate electron, to absorb light and generate the photoelectron and inject from uh, CCTS to titanium oxide, and uh, the uh, it shows the feasibility of this design in the optoelectronic applications. So in conclusion, we have uh, in situ fabricated the CZTS nanoparticles on titanium oxide and uh, uh, has demonstrat demonstrated the early stage uh, photoelectron generation by CZTS and the injection from CZTS to titanium oxide. And uh, now we are performing further work to try to improve the performance and by uh, improving, uh, by uh, minimize the optical loss and the, uh, to reduce the charge recombination. And uh, hopefully by doing this, we could make a big jump and uh, uh, make through this jump and uh, finally get something and uh, uh, bring new thoughts to the uh, CZTS photo attack field. And thanks very much for your attention. Uh, you mean this de efficiency for yeah. for this device? Well, that's a tough question for me to answer because uh, right now the current it's uh, related to the quantum efficiency. It's got like a, uh, twenty percent at blue light region, but uh, unfortunately the voltage is really really low. And uh, uh, when we calculate the efficiency, it's only like zero point two, zero point three right now. So, but the current. Uh, I have in, in I have do the integration of this uh, peak and calculate the uh, short circuit current is about three milliamp uh, per centimeter square and uh, I also do the IV testing which is showing as a backup here and uh, it's uh, more than three milliamp per centimeter square but the vo open circuit voltage is really really low so it's zero point two volts. That's the uh, direction we need to like, focus, try to improve this effect. Uh, can you explain why you don't have a nice cathode? Do you have a decrease in the current that's on the bottom? This one or this one? That's, yeah, the red circle, don't have a oh, that's a very poor few factors, and it could have different reasons the shunt resistance and series resistance are not optimized. And uh, there would be a lot of recombination centers. And also, there's another problem because CZTS, it's, a, it's a generally it's a P-type semiconductor. When it's in combined with titanium oxide, uh, it's not like cadmium sulfide and, uh, or the widely investigated uh, quantum dots that both are untapped. And when they get together, there's no like big shift of the thing level. For this, there could be like charge, uh, like uh, first the great migration of the charge at first, and then they uh, when we fabricate into device, there will be uh, another issues. So that's all together we think could lead to the decrease of fuel factor. And we should, in order to improve that, we should do like one thing at a time. <laughs> I have a question. So, what are the main relation mechanisms in uh, compare if you compare nano uh, nano nanos and uh, nanoparticles? Rays, yeah. uh, as I mentioned here, while well, there's for these materials or for other like complex, yeah. yeah. So, uh, for the nanoparticles, because we have a lot of particles, okay. so it's one particle you can consider as the one uh, like single crystal and when we have a lot of crystals when the charge needs to be collected at the bottom it's used to pass a lot of green boundaries and the, the green boundaries mostly is most active part okay. and the most effect and okay. yeah well, thank you very much thank okay. you again